I'm Jeremy Nathans. I'm an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and a professor at the Johns Hopkins Medical School. Today, I'd like to talk for a few minutes about creativity in science, it's something that all of us working scientists think about, but it's a bit of a slippery concept. We wonder where it comes from. We wonder how to enhance it, how to cultivate it, and um, it's worth discussing because it's really at the core of the scientific enterprise. So what is creativity? What's a, what is a good idea? What makes an idea a good idea? I think there are a number of things that go into it. Uh, in my field, which is experimental science, experimental biology, uh, most of the ideas relate to experiments. Very, very few of them are conceptual, strictly conceptual breakthroughs. I think many of us spend a lot of time mulling over our data, mulling over our experiments, thinking about how to make the next creative breakthrough. Today, I'd like to share with you what I do in trying to cultivate uh, my own good ideas, and uh, maybe it would be useful to uh, some people who are viewing this interview. First, I write ideas down. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years, uh, ever since I was an undergraduate. I find that in writing things down, it forces me to think more deeply about the idea itself. In many cases, it has the sad result that I think uh, ultimately that it wasn't a particularly good idea after all. Uh, it forces one to think um, maybe of related ideas, and in the act of writing it down, a new idea not infrequently emerges. And I think it provides a nice longitudinal record so that you can look back and see that, well, maybe a year ago, two years ago, there was this kernel of an idea, and now that I know something more or something new has happened in the field, the idea can evolve in uh, a new and maybe significant way. And related to that, I try uh, as much as possible to talk to other people about my ideas. Again, many of them are I think not particularly original or not practical or uh, for one reason or another are not going to go very far, but simply talking with others about them, it's stimulating, it's fun, and to the extent that additional people are thinking about it from a different angle, they're bringing their own experiences to bear on it, uh, the idea matures. And um, that, I think, that social aspect of the turning over of ideas is very important. It's certainly been important for me. I think another thing that goes into uh, the mix in thinking about uh, creative ideas is the eclectic body of knowledge that each of us has. And it, I think it's very important to cultivate one's body of knowledge as a, as a working scientist, uh, not to just read the same things that other people are reading, uh, to think about perhaps technologies that are different, to think about uh, fields that are a little bit orthogonal to the ones that you're working on, uh, and in that way develop your own unique intellectual fingerprint, really, something that's distinct from what other people uh, have brought to the field. Because in many cases, it's the connection between two disparate or, or more than two disparate areas which one person can make, which maybe is not obvious to others in the field, which is the crux of a good idea. Another thing that I have tried to do over the years is study what I consider to be the good ideas of other scientists, to try to get some sense of how they addressed a challenging problem. Of course, for those really great ideas, the ones that have changed the history of science, there, there is a sense of inevitability to them, uh, a sense of finality in some cases, which I think doesn't really do justice to the process that created them. I think the struggle initially when it was not obvious is the more interesting part. So let's just take, for example, uh, Einstein's theory of relativity, special relativity. Uh, this is an incredibly beautiful idea. It's very simple. Uh, it's one of those ideas which once you understand it, you think it's, it's almost obvious. It's, it's the sort of only way it could have been, but it was not at all obvious uh, at that beginning. Uh, Einstein 
uh, had to jettison a series of assumptions, assumptions that were so deeply ingrained about the nature of space and time, for example, that they weren't even appreciated to be assumptions. And I think that, for example, is a very important lesson. One of the great lessons of Einstein's uh, insight is that one should very rigorously examine those things that are the assumptions upon which your ideas are built because the assumptions may not be right. They may not be completely wrong, but they not, may not be exactly right. One aspect of good ideas, which at first blush is not intuitively obvious, is that they resemble jokes. A good idea is like a good joke. They both have a spark, they make a connection, they require a certain suspension of one's conventional thinking, a willingness to, it's a hackneyed phrase, but I'll say it, think out of the box, to think of things in a somewhat different way. And I think it also requires a playfulness to have good ideas, an ability to be almost childlike in your appreciation for the newness of nature, to see things through fresh eyes. And I think that playfulness has been captured by many scientists over the years. Newton had one of the, I think, nicest uh, ways of seeing it in himself. He, he said late in life that when he looked back on his career, he thought that he was just a child playing on the beach and looking for the next pretty pebble. And I think in many ways that is the essence of scientific creativity.